Hello, everybody, and welcome. Happy Thursday to everyone. And uh, Leslie Bytel here, business strategist and mentor. And um, guys, I'm really excited about our time together today. Um, we have a special guest, and that is Jeff Lockheed from Meal Garden. All right. So welcome, Jeff. So happy to have you today. Hi, thanks. Thanks to see you again, Leslie. Yeah. So we're going to have a great conversation with Jeff today. Really looking forward to that. So um, so we're going to be talking about some really, I think, super interesting topics. And specifically, the I'd say the overarching theme today is teach versus tell. OK, so are you teaching or are you telling? And um, it, it's a really important distinction that we're going to delve into a little bit more today. So um, and the other thing is what your clients really want when they ask for a meal plan. Hand up if you can relate. How often do your clients ask for a meal plan? I know when I was doing this work, it was all the time. And, you know, back then when I had my practice, we did not have amazing software such as Meal Garden. So it was like, oh, my God, a meal plan. You know, <laughs> it was so much work. Can you relate to that? I'm sure many of you can. Many of you probably can remember those days before we had great software to really make this part of our job easy. So today we're going to be talking with Jeff. Um, we're going to talk about the transition from plans to solutions and how smart practitioners are actually transitioning toward these meal solutions as a way to improve client success and simply um, as a strategy for growing their business as well. So um, really looking forward to that. Um, let me give you a few specific bullet points that we'll be covering um, how to save 70% or more of your time. Sounds amazing, right? Sign me up for that. Exact steps to create the solutions that your clients actually want. Um, how to make it easy as possible for your clients to get tangible results and some proven strategies to expand your business in a fun and easy way, which that's what we're all about, guys. Why else would we, would we be doing this if we didn't want to have some fun some flexibility while making a great living, serving people that, that we really enjoy being with. So, all right, with that little background, so welcome again, Jeff. Really happy to have you here with me. Why don't we um, start by you telling us a little bit about your background and your story? Uh, sure, yeah. So my background is, um, <clears throat> it's a good way to put it. So right out of school, I started at a technology company a startup. This is about uh, almost 20 years ago. I worked there for 12 years in the um, sales leadership and business development, product management, all kinds of stuff. Uh, built the company, went public, you know, really great success story. Um, flew a million miles in 10 years and just learned a lot about sales and uh, relationship management and really building businesses. Um, post, uh, my exit was in 2013. I traveled Japan and Europe for a year and a half. In that time, I also did my graduate studies in cognitive coaching. So mm -hmm. executive, executive coaching was what it's typically called, but cognitive coaching where I went. Um, and after that, I um, you know, did a whole bunch of things in analytics and was working with different companies. And, and really, my focus is working with uh, companies that have social impact. Right. Things that, that make a difference to the world at large. So, um, you know, the, the first company I was with worked in uh, people transportation and, you know, some of the other companies. So a uh, fellow, uh, a previous co-worker from the, the, the company that we did the IPO at knocked on my door, I guess, two or three years ago. And he was working on a product called Meal Garden. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. What's that? And, and he explained to me kind of the problem he was trying to solve. And um I didn't know anything about it. And I was like, this sounds really cool because healthy eating is very problematic. My, my, uh, you know, I have struggled with that myself. I've obviously now I, uh, understand a lot better, but as I started to learn it, learning and working in meal garden, I realized that, uh, healthy eating is very, um, it's very unique for each person. Like there's some broad healthy eating, but then there's some very specific healthy eating, right? And I think one of the great stats that I came across, I think I always love talking about this, is there's 400 million people in North America and there's under 100,000 
actual health practitioners and even fewer of them work one-on-one -on -one with, with customers, right? So I was like, ah, oh, it's really interesting. And so what Meal Garden does is we help practitioners connect with their clients and we help in, in kind of three ways, right? One is um, make it easier with, as you mentioned, like save you tons of time, like save you tons of time, makes it way easier, build a meal plan, 30 minutes, push it out, create collections, create membership sites, really, really easy to do, beautiful recipes, all that thing. The other thing is feedback loops, right? So making it easier for you to see how your client's progressing and to jump in there when they're not making, like at those coaching moments, I think you might call them, Leslie, like finding the perfect coaching moment and being able to kind of show up and say, hey, I, could, I think you might need to have a conversation. And then the third thing is kind of building, growing your audience, right? Building your business. So memberships, free programs, uh, you know, this idea of, of building the customer journey and those relationships. So um, I thought it was exciting. I was like, this sounds great. Um, my co-founder, Vlad, we decided, hey, let's build a team and build it out. And that's that's what we've been doing uh, uh, since then. And that's what we're doing today. That's awesome. So yeah. a really unique background. So really in coaching, like the executive coaching, but also technology. Yeah. Yeah. The executive coaching, I think, was one of the things that, uh, well, I, I think you're, you're an MBA, right? So when I graduated, which is, um, I was like, well, should I do an MBA or should I do this cognitive coaching thing? And wh where I grew up and where I was trained at, at Trapeze, a very successful company, we had folks like yourself, mm -hmm. they were just great coaches, right? And they were like, ask the right questions and really let us get out there and learn and grow and, and succeed. And I was like, I think that'll be um, more interesting for me right now rather versus an MBA. So that's, that's what I went along. I was just like, I could see that life, life changing, right? Life changing. The power of questioning is, uh, and you know, I think you and I are both in sales and everybody's in sales. Yeah. The best salespeople are the best listeners and yeah. ask the best questions, which, you know, I think everybody should remember that because sales is the bullish go get them sales. That's not the guy who's successful. The guy who's successful or the gal who's successful is introspective listens, ask great questions, super curious, right? Very helpful. That things, those kinds that of is things. so true. Yeah. Oh my God. So true. Like, and I hear that a lot um, in the role that I'm in, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I hear, Oh, I sales. I hate sales because I hate selling myself. Yep. Right. Yep. And the reality is it's not about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. You really don't have to sell yourself. It is not about you. It's about that person. And so it, it is really interesting. So I feel like once you wrap your mind around it not being really about you, it really can help move you forward. It's really about being able to ask those important questions. And really, I love that approaching it from a standpoint of curiosity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I think the best salespeople are, are the ones that are have the, like I always call, call look at the, the market we work with in our the gals and guys that we work with, and I'm like, your superpower is nutrition, yeah, which is meta to life. Like you can do things like the power you can have with someone. It's so transformational. Don't worry. The selling, it'll sell, you can sell yourself just by listening, very curious, and then layering your knowledge on top of that, right? And really helping people succeed. <clears throat> Sales is the, that's the easy part, right? Exactly. So it is ironically, though, where a lot of people do struggle. Well, yeah, for sure. And I think uh, the interesting thing that I'm seeing from from, uh, you know, I think we run um, a podcast, we sponsor Kiki, but I think, you know, yeah. Kiki, Absolutely. she runs a pod, a podcast called Keeping It Real. And I know, I, you know, Kiki, I think you did a series with Kiki, right, early on. Um, and I talk to Kiki on a regular basis about what she's learning, what she's seeing, what she sees with the, the members that use Meal Garden is they really... And I think it's a powerful transformation, right? From they go from telling and selling to teaching and helping, right? Mm. So, so what what they do is they engage with their clients, and and they really kind of teach them those skill sets. So there's like cooking classes, uh, shopping trips, um, building meal plans cooperatively, right? Um, providing a safe place for for clients to actually schedule, right? So even moving away from the word plan and moving to schedule, right? Nobody likes to plan. Everybody like scheduling is not scheduling and planning are kind of the same, but just the, 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 the words make people feel differently. Right. So what, what she sees and what we're seeing is the folks that are really successful with meal garden, take that teaching approach. Right. So they're almost 
shifting their own mindset and being like, I don't need to sell. I need to teach. I need to encourage and help people grow. Right. And, and that's, that's what we're seeing like a ton, a ton of that and a ton of um, memberships, right? Like memberships and saying um, like, again, I think you just did a, a whole thing on this, right. Which really yeah. lines up with it. Like you have different levels and you can, I, we're seeing practitioners that are setting up programs specific for memberships, specific to different conditions, memberships specific to different goals, things like that, right? Which is really, really great. So the folks that are really thriving are like, I'm gonna teach you, uh, I think there's a, there's a teach you how to fish. Is it teaching you how to fish versus giving you a fish? Something like yeah. that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of that. Is that where the teach versus tell? I was gonna ask, where, you know, where does that come from? Yeah, that will, so that's like a, a tag that I think, um, you know, there's just something, a way that I summarize what we're finding is working, right? So the folks that we're talking to a lot have transitioned from, here's a meal plan, right? Good luck. Here you go. Um, I'll see you in two weeks. So let me know how it goes to being like, okay, uh, like, is it, if you're asking me for a meal plan, is that really what you want, right? So if it is, great, we have those things and let me show you how to use it and let me show you how to set it up so that you can get it going. But But also like, are you looking for a plan or are you looking for a safe place? Are you looking for, or even, you know, a safe place is like a place where you can find, like trying to find recipes that match a condition on the internet is uh, the, the internet isn't built for that. Like it's not built for that. It's built to get you to buy things. It's not built to help you find, um, you know, kidney safe type thing. It's not, it's not built for that. Right. So right. Um, helping people providing them a safe place where they can go and find meals that match their needs as well as, you know, teaching in other areas as well outside of meals. Like just sometimes you'd be surprised or um, probably not you, but people outside of this industry would be surprised that, um, you know, sometimes how hard it is to shop. Uh, some people try and reading a nutrition label, like things like that, like just teaching those beta meta skills. Mm -hmm. So you're more comfortable um, like nourishing yourself. Right. And being able to navigate the world, right. Like sometimes it feels like, food manufacturers are um, sometimes feel like they're kind of working against us. I don't think that's the case, but sometimes it, they can make it easier for us to help. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about, you know, when someone asks for a meal plan, what are they really asking for? Yeah. Well, so that's the thing. I think it's great when somebody asks you for a meal plan. Um, I think this is a great coaching opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, you can kind of think of a good question. Somebody asks for a meal plan. I think most people are like, sure. Okay let's go into intake mode and start telling me what you want that meal plan. So food preferences, yeah. right? That's a great way to do it. And that makes sense. But another way to do it might be like, okay, what do you want to achieve with your meal plan? Right? Like, what do you want to achieve? What, what do you, mm -hmm. if I provide this to you, what is that going to look like? Right. And then being able to dig in. And I think when you dig into that again, what people are asking for is like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So if, giving me the meal plan is like this, uh, you know, it feels easy because now I have my plan and I can check that off, but that's not, it's folks that take that approach. I think the success rates are much lower than folks that say, well, is that really what you're looking for? And Hey, why don't we start building skills and, you know, starting like really using that, that, that um, request as an opportunity to create a conversation and then start digging deeper. Right. So, um, you know, like the three whys and all that. As you start asking more questions and digging deeper, well, sometimes what it actually comes down is I just don't know how to cook. Well, a meal plan isn't going to help that. <laughs> it's, it's not going to help, right? It um, is or not, not going to do it for you. <laughs> right. Or there's, um, um, uh, you could give somebody a, a meal plan. They're like, I'm, I'm just constantly busy. I have three kids and I just don't have, I just don't have the time and I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, okay. Well, that's a whole different thing. Like then you, what you need actually is maybe, a set of recipes that you can pull out of the pull out of the freezer or maybe even what you need is like and I, there's so many neat things happening with the platform it's, it's so interesting to see but some users are actually going to grocery stores for their clients and finding the pre-made meals mm. and entering those into meal garden and saying okay hey this is a grocery store that you go to if you're super busy you're a you're an executive and you got two little ones you got soccer you got dance and you have uh CEO that's, you know, always keeping you late. Hey, you know what? You got to go to your HEB and you need to pick up a pre-made meal 
which we already know we've entered the nutritional information. So you can see it. This pre-made meal will work for you. It's healthy. It'll fit in your lifestyle. But hey, we just reduced a ton of stress for you that a meal plan in itself, a PDF meal plan wouldn't have helped with, right? So those are some of those kind of examples, right? Love that. Maybe uh, I think it'd be a good idea if you shared a little bit about the platform. Uh, okay. And in, in what way? Uh, like, just, in what way? Uh, you know, like how can it, how can this particular platform, because you mentioned some of the, you know, movement forward in terms of the capabilities. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So where, you know, give us a little update on, on what is possible. And, you know, the other thing that you mentioned, I guess it's a two prong question. Um, you mentioned my multiple streams of income mm -hmm. last week. So let's talk a little bit about where Meal Garden fits into that as well. Yeah. So <laughs> I think um, a good way to talk about that is, um, and this is my opinion based on, on what, what I've seen in the industry and also what our goals are and, and why I'm here is that a lot of meal planning systems simply replicate paper processes, right? And that, that's typical with a lot of software, right? You find something that's on paper, has a whole bunch of paper and is kind of complicated and, you know, let's automate that. So a lot of the tools did that. Um, what we did when we started building the product was taking um, a really fresh look and being like, we don't know anything about meal planning. Mm -hmm. So let's start talking to people and trying to figure out what exactly they need. And that's where solutions came from, right? So there's a features and functions in Meal Garden to create a meal plan, zippity zap. So you go in, you do leftovers, make again, all kinds of very deep capabilities to make it really easy for you to build that meal plan and then share it with a client. Like that's, we do that. But then we also looked at it and we're like, well, it doesn't sound like the meal planning is, that's, that's one part of it, but there's also all these other things that you're doing around uh, the, like resources, for example, handouts, right? Or handouts, like explaining, uh, say you're working with a specific condition, right? Like hypertension or something like that. Not only are you want to kind of take care of the meal thing, but also incorporate content to kind of educate. So pe some people are curious, some people want to know, or even I think one of our most popular handouts is how to read a food label, which I still don't think they make it easy for you, but you know, like just that kind of stuff. So we incorporated those things. And then we also started incorporating kind of memberships and programs. And again, this really came from conversations with practitioners around being like, you know, what are you trying to do? And like, I want to grow my business. Yeah. Right. Okay. And a lot of the business growth strategies out there don't, I, the way we saw it is like, well, why aren't we incorporating your superpower into that business growth mm -hmm. and your superpower being nutrition, right? And then, and people love meals, meals are meta. So how can we incorporate this thing through the technology um, to make it easier for you to kind of move into that hybrid model, right? Like I think hybrid is where everything's going. Um, mm -hmm. I personally believe that's the absolute best way to do it is hybrid. I, I don't think I'd want to do everything in groups or everything online. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's, it's a good, it's a good balance. Those one-on-one -on -one conversations I think are the juiciest and where you're going to learn the most and, and sometimes have the most fun, but the group conversations actually provide a lot of value as mm -hmm. well. So th those kinds of things and um, you know, wrapping in multimedia. And I think the, uh, the biggest thing that we've learned, is um, make it really, 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 really easy. Yes. Really, really easy. Like, so, so when you kind of look at the UX and the user experience in Mealguard, and we have a little bit bigger buttons, a lot of help, um, you know, just a lot of contrast, a lot of obviousness, because the other thing, like we heard a lot from our clients is, I want to get in, I want to get my things done, and then I got to get going. Like everybody has... Uh, what's one of the things that we were talking about is nobody got into this business to work 90 hours a week. That's not, that's not what we want to do. Right. So how can we make it easier for people along this path? And I think, um, you know, for me coming from my, my background, relationships are key, right? One of the themes we had back when we were building, running uh, sales teams and stuff was keep the conversation going. Once you've started a conversation, keep that conversation going. And as, as you become that trusted source, these, these people will come back to you. That, that's what they're going to do naturally. Nobody wants to necessarily, well, not nobody, but not most people don't want to search for solutions, right? Mm -hmm. They want, they have a problem. They want to fix it. They want to move on. So keeping the conversation going, we've really tried to incorporate that into the technology. Like how do you build groups? How do you build okay. um, 
how do you integrate with other tools, right? How do you make it so that, you know, no cl practitioners don't want to give their clients this huge list of things to go and download and all that. And you have a practice management. So like, how do we, how do we work with practice management? How do we move away from the app store so that your clients can just, you know, pick up their phone, hit a button, boom, they're in, there you go. There's no apps, nothing's confusing. Cause it's, it's a very sensitive space, right? I think your clientele or our clients clientele, um, it's a, it's a weird space. So a lot of them are in a lot of trouble. A lot of it's very private, right? Very sensitive stuff. So they just right. kind of need that comfort and, and kind of going and getting all kinds of different tools. The more complicated you make it, the harder it is for, for, for them to succeed, right? So Yeah, and they won't want to use it. No, oh, yeah, they nobody. They'll you know. reject it, um, yeah. which, yeah, that's, that's the last thing you want to happen, right? Where the client's like, oh, my God, it's just it's too complicated. I can't do this. For sure. And I think I know one thing is like, I think a lot of clients ask for PDFs, which um, I, I almost every time somebody creates a PDF at a meal garden, which happens thousands of times a day, I actually yeah. feel in my body. I'm like, oh, but I understand accessibility. Mm -hmm. So not everyone wants to use a, use an app or a program. So we, we're, like, we're really trying to ease the industry towards yeah. online, but making it easy for um people to get those pds and use those pdfs you want because you don't want to agitate people right you don't, you don't unless like i think in our space there's there's kind of um required friction when you chain when you're doing a lot of change sometimes it is going to be uncomfortable but l let's make sure that's in places that are um, where it's necessary and not not make it hard through technology right because yeah. like, like people don't come to a, a registered dietitian or a health coach to, for the technology. That's, that's not what they're, it's, it needs to be a complimentary tool, like a sidekick. Like that's, we think meal garden is kind of a sidekick for a practitioner. Mm -hmm. And again, it just balances out like nutrition is your superpower, but it needs to take, it can't take up all your time. That just doesn't make sense. Right. right. Tell us a little bit about, um, so basically um, just to kind of recap, I'm hearing that there's a lot of opportunity to, to partner with meal garden in order to achieve multiple streams of income, right? For 100%. It's, yeah. it's absolutely 100% built in a way that, um, you know, and <clears throat> again, this idea of the customer journey and where different people arrive is for you, it's the best to start those conversations. So if you have some free programs, you have some free resources, and then maybe you have kind of a self-service opportunity and then, and then you really want to, you can use that data to find those people and send those messages for those more powerful, more impactful, uh, like I think signature programs, uh, master classes, those kinds of things. Like I know, um, I know Kiki uses the software exactly like that, right? She has a free membership site. She has some paid stuff mixed in there. And then for the people that are really active, she reaches out to them, um, independently and says hey you should join my master class and that's the way to do it right like when you have a sea of people how do you how do you find those those kind of people that are going to be the right conversations at the right time and that's data right analytics can help you to kind of understand that right so if you um maybe you have a free membership site and you have 10 people that are really really active hey maybe those are the people that you focus on because they're most likely to be interested in moving up the ladder and they probably are going to find the most value. Right. Right. Yep. You could probably flip it too and see people that aren't active at all and reach out to them. And maybe they're, you're going to learn something from that. Maybe there's something with your offering that you can change to make it more attractive for those people that aren't engaged, but an analytics is, and I think you talk a lot about that, like data and analytics, like that, that's another thing that we really think a lot about is giving you that information so that you can, optimize and move your business in a direction that's going to go with the market and make it, make it easy for you to, to, I guess, stop spinning your wheels. I think sometimes sales can feel like spinning your wheels, right? Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about um, what you call meal solutions, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is, how is that different as compared to meal plans and what would be some examples of this in real life? Um. So meal solutions are really like meal solutions could include meal plans, but it's really a meal solution is um, there's two terms that I use in real life and meeting someone where they eat. Right. So a meal solution is and I think um, we use this example once I got actually a couple great examples. So 
Um, for example, uh, HEB, right, which is a large grocery chain out of um, in Texas, right? Huge, just a spectacular business, great people. And what they do is they actually have plans and and collections and they've actually incorporated a bunch of their different types of meals. So there's a you can do a lot of personalization in meal garden and they've actually tagged all their independent meals as, um, you know, uh, grab and go pre-cooked, this kind of stuff. So when they're when their clients go into their meal garden, they can they're scheduling versus planning. Yeah. And they can kind of do it on the fly. So, you know, some people will schedule on, on Sunday night or Monday morning. Um, and they're like, you know what? I got soccer. So I'm going to go buy HEB. And I know that I can get this um, grab and go meal. And I know that it's on sale. So, hey, that's that's great. That's that's one way a solution works. So there's a, a woman named Angie in Toronto. She actually goes around to independent restaurants and does actually consulting work. Right. So she. Mm -hmm healthifies and helps restaurants with their uh, labeling and stuff. Those meals then go into meal garden and then she can actually go out in her neighborhood and say, Hey, like nobody, not everyone eats at home always. Right. Right. So, Hey, here, we've already actually got these meals from local restaurants in meal garden and you can order them or you can see it ahead of time. So that's, that's kind of um, another example of, of a yeah. meal solution. Right. Um, so good. There's so many of those. I know we have a bunch of chefs uh, that work with the tool and they actually do cooking classes with it. Mm. So they'll do a cooking class. They'll upload the video from the cooking class into meal garden and also the recipes so people can go and, and, and try it out. Right. That kind of stuff. So I think that's in my mind, meal solutions. Some people want a collection. Some people want a safe environment where all the meals available are, related and support their specific conditions or their specific goals. Some people are in a different position. They're like, Hey, I just want a, a meal plan. Like that's all I want. And that's fine. Right. So a solution is really uh, kind of looking at the person, the, the, the specific person you're talking to and then making it easy for them to succeed. Right. So simple things like, um, uh, you know, when you onboard a client, you can go into meal garden and add their family. So when they take a meal plan, it automatically scales like little things like that. Like they just really reduce a lot of the friction around created, creating healthy eating. And not everybody, um, not everybody likes to cook. Some people like to cook, but some people are like, I need things that are easy. So you go into meal garden, you say, all right, uh, for the first two weeks, you're going to see recipes that can be done in 10 minutes with under five ingredients. Right. Mm -hmm. So th things like that. And um, even uh, one of my other favorite examples is Diana out of uh, South Florida who had a client, um, a tech client, who every time at lunch, they went for burritos and they refused to not eat burrito. They're like, I have to do that's That's it. That's happening. Right. So what she did is she went to the place, got a burrito, entered the burritos makeup in meal garden as a pre-made meal, and then was able to sit with her client and say, OK, so this is the impact your burrito has. Hit the nutrition button. Here's a graph, your macros and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and this is the impact your burrito has. So this is how you need to eat around the burrito, which is fine. Like, that's fine. That's, it's okay. I mean, you know, you just have to change the eating habits around that. So that, that's okay. Right. And, you know, you could kind of start, I think there's a whole bunch of other consulting that goes around, but that's kind of exciting stuff. Right. So it's like taking meal planning from the computer, bringing it in real, in real life. And then also, and in real life means integrating it with the way people move around the world. And then also meeting people where they eat so that if people have, um, you know, are, are digging their heels in some places, you can back up and say, okay, well, what is it that you're eating? Well, let's put it in. We're going to automatically calculate all that nutritional information. And now we can look at, we can compare it and say, Hey, look, this is, you know, this is what this particular meal does to your body. And to, to offset that, you need to do these things or, you know, reduce uh, it's, it's so funny how even just changing an ingredient can make such a huge impact. So moving from carb heavy, um, to like, you know, the mashed cauliflower or something like that, which, you know, it, it doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it actually can, depending on the conditions or the goals you're aiming for. Right. Make a huge difference. Those small yeah. changes sometimes are the best. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Small, small changes. For sure. It's really working. It's looking at the, the, the person, like the, the big picture, not just yeah. here's your meal plan. Good luck. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's making it easy for practitioners too. As I remember, um, I think it was the last time we talked. Yeah. You, you mentioned, which we did, I don't know, conversation was all wobbly wobbly, right, with the technology, yeah. but you had mentioned that 
Um, and I thought it was a great conversation. You'd mentioned that you weren't, uh, back when you were doing this, you weren't all that comfortable with, with recipe. Like when people I, ask you, you're like, I, it's not, I don't want to step out of my comfort zone, but I don't know. I don't know how to help you with that. Yeah. Right? yeah. It was, I, I felt like it was a, a deficit for sure. Cause it's yeah. just not, it wasn't my comfort area. And frankly, there weren't a lot of, you know, there weren't um, options like this to, to really help me out. So yeah, I felt really, honestly, full transparency. I felt really uncomfortable with that culinary, like, great at the science part, like more of a, I don't know, more of a diagnostician, probably, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, the, the clinical side, right? Mm -hmm. Here's, mm -hmm. here's what's going on. Here's what you do. Right. Mm -hmm. But in terms of implementing, that's where I, I felt really like, Ooh, <laughs> there's a deficit here. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I really struggled with that. Yeah. And I think that, um, I would, I think that a lot of people still, so first of all, I think that's great to share. And I think that a lot of folks out there out of the hundreds of thousands or hundred thousand practitioners, a lot are still in that space. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's a bad thing. Being, being diagnostic and working on the science is like pretty meta too, right? That's pretty, pretty important. Yeah. And I think that might be in a lot of situations, I'd rather have that skill than the other skill, right? But yeah. having a tool that you trust that has meals in it that are being created and, and cultivated by peers like yourself. So you can say, Hey, I got a thing that I can say, okay, these are your conditions. These are your food sensitivities away you go. And then you can use that as a tool for conversation building, yeah. uh, for progress tracking, stuff like that. Just making it easier for folks like yourself to get in there and do that and not be intimidated by technology. Cause it's, it's not like we need another technology tool, right? Like I think, which is I think most people have eight to 10 tools in their technology stack of those. Probably you're using about 20% of the capabilities, which is so frustrating, a whole different conversation, but it's also just that, that mental model of having to build up that, that recipe base or doing things that are out of your comfort zone, which you're already moving a million miles a minute. Right. And to be fair, the diagnostic part is the important part. So how do you incorporate meals in an easy way that you're comfortable with that's providing value to your client and then also is is a, is a evolutionary, so it's evolving, right? So then you start thinking about AI and these kind of really interesting yeah. things, and you're like, oh, that's that's pretty cool, right? So and those are things that are um, AI is a little ways off, but there's some really neat things that we'll be able to use AI as complementary to the practitioner. You cannot remove the practitioner yeah. from these models, right. and um, you know I, I believe that no matter how hard they try, I actually think that's the wrong approach. I think the approach that's going to be most successful to actually have any impact on the world is empowering practitioners to, to, to do, to meet with more people, right? Moving to that hybrid, moving to that group model, touching more people. And then from that group, finding the folks that really want to engage at that next level, right? Like, I think that's, that's how, and, and artificial intelligence and all these things are going to support the practitioner. Mm. The human will always be, very, very important, especially with these things that are very, very sensitive and very intimate, right? Like a lot of the stuff is very intimate to your clients. So just punching things into a computer, they've been trying for 20 years to do that. And it's just, it's not uh, the, the assisted model, I think is the right approach. Yeah. So AI is a, the ultimate, it's more of a compliment, right? It, it, it is. It's very, very, very difficult stuff. I did, a, I have a, another graduate degree in, in um, <clears throat> AI management and uh, data science management. Okay. And uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult to do with food. Yeah. It's too personal, right? Human beings are, it's just too personal. So it can complement and support, but it will never replace the intuition or the emotional connection that you get with a, a practitioner, which I think is actually a really big deal. I think if you're being someone that struggled with food and knowing uh, other folks who struggle with food, it can be embarrassing. It's very sensitive, very personal. You you need to get comfortable with people as you move forward, which is, again, why relationship building is very important in our, our industry, I think. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about the go back to sales. So sure. I, know I talk a lot about sales um, mm -hmm. in, in my work. And I, I know that this is a sh somewhat of a shared passion that you and I both have. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So do you have any, you know, thoughts, recommendations for 
you know, the practitioner, whether it's a budding practitioner kind of just getting started or the more experienced clinician, what, what would you say? Um, so I guess there's a few different things. I'm trying to think of like, what's like, when you say, what would I say is it's like almost like around what topic of that, like um, wh where I would focus my attention or kind of like, are we kind of two sales leaders talking to what we would tell salespeople, like how to feel? Yeah. Okay, cool. You know, how to, I think, um, you know, kind of circling back to what we mentioned earlier is this is really, it, it's somewhat intuitive, but not mm -hmm. for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you recommend that clinicians navigate through those, you know, kind of those, that whole process? So I, this is what I would do. I think the number one thing to do is have uh, a mindset of abundance, right? Mm -hmm. Like so good. A, a mindset of abundance. There are people out there that need your help, right? Mm -hmm. Take a learner approach, right? Be curious and, and a learner mindset, uh, you know, it's something you can Google. It's, it's a clear thing, but just really even, so when you're getting going, a learner mindset's really important. I think even as a, a as a senior or a, a it's even as important to be a learner because you can kind of get in that place where you know everything and that's where things kind of get dangerous. Right. So have a learner mindset. I, I love the mantra of keeping the conversation going. So if I was growing a business, I would set goals for myself around, like, I want to have five conversations a day. I want to have two conversations a day and, and really documenting those conversations. And really the reason I say document them is because you'll actually absorb more by writing it down or typing it down after and th then you're going to start understanding your market. And when you start to understand your market, now you're going to be able to start creating copy that resonates, right? And I think um, copy is king. Being able to write good copy, concise copy, powerful copy is king. Um, I remember uh, on my onboarding for all my uh, sales reps that I used to work with, which is I still have coaching with sales. Or I just love I, I just love selling. It's so fun. But um, the two books we would read is uh, Hey, Whipple, Squeeze This, which is the very first. It's like the copywriting Bible, right? Like it's a really good book. It's very old, but it's really, really good around um, how to write good copy. And then there's another book uh, that we use called uh, The Craft of Copywriting. So just really, and these are sales guys, right? So I was like, learn how to write copy, how to articulate messaging in a concise way. And also, a lot of copywriting comes down to understanding what the person you're writing to cares about. Right. And that's where that whole idea of keeping the conversation going that, that that's kind of, for me is like, just keep having lots of conversations, be super helpful. Right. I think it's uh, it used to be ABCs of like, remember always be closing. So I think now it's always be helping. Right. Just uh, always be helping. Right. right? And, and you know, there's a whole bunch of other things we could have. I think we could have so many conversations about this, about, uh, you know, downloads and email lists and all this stuff, which I think is important. Um, those are all tactical things like philosophically be a learner, always be helping focus yeah. on copy. Like that copy is actually the, the really powerful thing. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> you know, ask people what success looks like for them. Right. Yeah. And ground your conversations. So every time you have a conversation, like, what does success look like today? You know, okay, it's the same. All right, how are we doing? What roadblocks are you hitting? Oh, I'm hitting this roadblock. What do you think you can do to, to like really kind of lean in? Sometimes you just want to give an answer. I didn't find this. Uh, so my, um, I find that unfortunately in healthcare, you're under so much pressure mm -hmm. and there's just not enough time. And you also are an incredibly caring individual. So you often will find yourself as the person's talking, you're like, I got the answer already. Yes. Don't, don't do that. Fight that. Teach yourself not to do that. Listen, 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 pause, and then provide feedback. And even before you give an answer, try and think in your mind what other question you can ask. Is there an opportunity to go a little deeper here? Is this a symptom of the problem that they're talking about? Or is this actually a root problem, right? So a whole bunch of stuff there, but those yeah, I mean, there's so much to unpack with what you just said. Like, where do I begin here? Yeah. Um, so a couple things that come up for me. Mm -hmm. One, I love. So as a practitioner myself, I can say that we are trained to be the expert, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's 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 just how we're trained, right? Mm -hmm. So it is almost irresistible <laughs> to 
uh, unless you've had coach training. I really feel like that's how, you know, coach training can be so helpful because you really do learn to not always jump in and give the answer, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just, just what you're talking about. So very important um, because it's so much more powerful if the client articulates the answer versus you, you know, jumping in and, and giving it. The other thing that is really intriguing is um, I love the idea of keeping the conversation going. And, you know, when I was in sales, that was always the goal, right? Always find a reason to go back mm-hmm. right? so that you can keep the conversation going. So um, I'm thinking that some of our audience is wondering, well, like, how do I actually do that? How do I have two conversations a day? Like, what does that look like? What are the steps? Because I have a hunch this is not something that they're accustomed to. So how how would you recommend, like, uh, what, just reach out to people, text them, email them, and say, hey, you know, I'd love to have a chat with you. Like, how, like, how do you do that? So... <laughs> no, it's a great question. It's a, it's a there's it's, courses built around that, right? right? So I think I know it's not an easy one, but I think where, it, this is no, this is what I do. Practical, I like, okay, I love this idea, jump. I want to do it, but yeah. how? What yeah. do I do first? No, so, so, so it's like this is this is where the grind and the hustle and and it's like um, you know pivot, move, duck, dash, turn, like. Just get out there and ask people. So yeah, email people. Um, uh, get on Facebook. Get on Facebook and groups and stuff like that. Like it doesn't necessarily matter who you're talking to. Just do it. It's like practice. It's like any skill, any sport. And you want to just keep talking to people. And the key thing is not only talking to them, but going back, looking at your notes. Yeah. Recording your notes and absorbing and reflecting on the conversations. But mm-hmm. if I was to say how to do that, I would be like. Every blog post I wrote, every email I sent, every person I talked to, I would be two things. One, let's have another conversation. Um, and if I was trying to get a first conversation, I'd be like, I'm here to talk. I'm here to talk. I've, I've, my life is focused on helping you. So I'm here to talk. So if you get the first conversation before you hang up, get yourself an action item for a second conversation. Oh, so you could, it's as easy as just saying, okay, so um, when are we going to talk again? Yeah. Right. When are we going to talk in here? What should we talk? Or even like another great question would be, what are we going to talk about when we talk next? Right. So, so just, just those are the kinds of, um, those are the kind of, but that's really where you want to focus all your hustle is on finding those conversations. And it might be as easy as like, man, you know, the world's so dynamic. Like maybe you're going to your community center and you're hosting a, a live Q and R or what do they call it? AMAs? Ask me anything. And yeah. I know you're like, well, I've just got a school. And I don't have any clients. You're like nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody does. Everybody starts somewhere. And the ones that are winning are just really happy, positive and believe in themselves. Right. So, yeah. and that, that sounds kind of hokey, but it, it, when, when, if you're just starting out or if you're already there, those are the things that get you through it. Having really great com- And you know, when you do have a success with a client, share it. Get them to share it. Like asking a client, do you know anybody that might I might be able to work with? Would you mind joining me to talk about our experiences together? Like that other other people are always looking for signals that they're going to be able to succeed with you. And yeah. showing someone else that succeeded is always one of the one of the big ones, right? Mm-hmm. I got to tell you why I love this so much. <laughs> is it? I mean, it aligns so well with my philosophy. Yeah. And that is, I mean, I always, anyone that knows me knows that I say this all the time, get out there and talk to people. Mm -hmm. Just get out from behind your computer. Because what I see is, and I I know this because I used to do it too, even though, you know, I come from a sales background, it is sometimes easier to kind of sit behind your computer and be super busy, you know, creating this, you know, 15 page website and like all these things. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't result in movement forward. I mean, of course, don't get me wrong. Websites are important, right? Of course, but um, not at the cost of building relationships and getting out there and actually talking to people and inviting them into conversations that 
leads to sales, quite frankly. And you're not doing it for that purpose, but it just it 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 just automatically leads to you know getting more clients and being able to help more people and making a nice living doing what you do. So it's just in such great alignment with because I get a lot of questions like Leslie what are all the things I need to have set up? Like, what are, you know, all the technology, all the oh, things, yeah. <clears throat> all the, th I'm like, nothing. Yeah. You'd be great if you had a little website. You could just have a web page. Cell phone, there you go. Yeah, right. like, yep, I, no, for sure. Um, but your, really, your willingness to have conversations, I personally think is probably the most important indicator of um, long-term success, because at the end of the day, it really is about relationships, even in this day and age with all of our technology. Even so, more so potentially, right? Like even so. more so today than ever before, mm -hmm. relationships matter. And uh, if you're hesitant to have conversations, that's where I would start my own coaching and or whoever yeah. my friends were, whoever I'd be like, what is it, that, what's making you hesitant? And then, um, you know, how do you overcome that, right? Or how do you change? How do you change your mindset? It it is huge mindset, and what and I mean, once um, client my clients like practitioners can kind of shift that mindset, um, amazing things happen. I see it over and over. Mm -hmm. But there really can be some mental hurdles because we are afraid of bugging people, right? We're afraid like they're going to perceive us as like, oh, what are you doing? And the other thing is we're just so used to texting now, right? Um, having conversations is not as typical. Oh, I, I totally. It's yeah. I remember uh, <laughs> some of this. Some of my, one of my favorite uh, presidents that I work for is he said to me, he's like, don't don't send me emails anymore. Just call me. He's yeah, like, I don't have Jeff. We're not just call me. We'll, we'll get, or if you want to send me a text, say, when can we talk? <laughs> right? Uh -huh. right? Which is, is good. You get a lot more accomplished, but don't be, don't, you know, it, it's hard to say. I think uh, also a lot of the, a lot of you, you and, and, and the industry are operationally focused, right? Mm -hmm. If you're coming from a healthcare setting, you're kind of being fed. And again, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, I think one of the biggest challenges for the world to solve right now is yeah. just like, wow. how do we give all of you a little breathing room? <laughs> so you can actually start effective making change and, and helping people. Cause it's, we've actually built some, I think some bad habits in, I don't know why, but because of the way the business is, the industry is structured, mm -hmm. we've built these habits around, give them an answer, get on to the next person, give them yep. an answer. You don't have the opportunity to take the time and really understand what, like, what are the barriers to you eating healthy? Like just, it certainly isn't that you can't find a meal plan. There's gotta be more to it than that. Right. Yep. So and if you listen to them and people, what is it? Uh, one of the coaching things is seen, heard, and understood, right? Yeah. If people feel seen, heard, and understood. You're going to have a lot more success, not only in all aspects of your life, right? But seen, heard, and understood are, are three key things driving forward, um, like really effective business relationship kind of conversations. And, you know, it, man, it's just as effective as I'm sure you used to have these little stickies on your screens just to remind yourself, like, before I get off the phone, let's make sure that I can replay back what they've said and I can, and then they agree. And then we can, that's how you start building trust and stuff like that. You know, a great book is um, uh, the giants of sales, mm. which is a spectacular book. And it's, uh, it's another book I used to give out. And another one that's really fun is this book called getting to know, which is really fun. Getting to know is all about being like, it's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> It's, it's okay if somebody doesn't, it's an abundant world, man. If, if someone doesn't want to work with you, that doesn't mean you shouldn't reach out to them. Getting a no. Sure. Get, okay. No. All right. Well, that's cool. Be, be, be gracious and move on, right? That's, yeah. that's okay. It's still a conversation. It's still something to yeah. be on there. And no, in this case, doesn't mean no forever. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it might just be like in this moment, but yeah. it doesn't mean it's um, forever a no. Yeah. So, all right, I'm going to have to definitely pick that one up. Uh, highly recommend. So, Jeff, where can, um, where would you like people to go to learn more about you, more about Meal Garden, and all those, um, you know, just 
that stops. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, um, I guess to learn about me is um, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, probably if you want to learn about, you know, if you really want to learn or talk to me, go to home.mealgarden.com. Mm -hmm. Look on the little icon on the bottom. I still, we have a full team and I still manage our support. It's my okay. favorite. It's the most grueling thing to do because when people hit bugs, you're like, oh, but we're, we're really good at that. But I just love talking to people and, and helping people. So if you want to talk to me, you go to mealgarden.home.mealgarden.com. Um, you know, if you want to learn anything about, uh, we have a Facebook group. Kiki runs a spectacular, I think is a spectacular podcast, which is, doesn't really talk a lot about meal. She talks about people that use meal garden yeah. to succeed, but meal garden is always a sidekick. It's never a focal point of those conversations and some really exciting conversations there about interesting things. But What's the uh, name of the uh, podcast? It's called Making It Real. Okay, so I'll type this in, Making It Real. I love Kiki. She's so talented. She, it's she's she so is. Good. She's right. starting. She's starting a. Um, she's starting a campaign, or for this year, it's called the uh, Meal Garden in Real Meal Garden IRL Meal Meal Garden in Real Life. So really doubling down on the different ways that you can use meal because there's some exciting things I think that as practitioners, independent practitioners, we're not doing enough of. Yeah. Because we haven't even thought of it. Like, who thinks of going to a grocery store? and collecting sales and then creating a meal plan. And you're like, man, that's actually super valuable or, or coordinating with local restaurants and making it, you know, like that stuff is the powerful stuff, right? That that's really juicy. So Kiki's on a mission to kind of find more people that are using meal garden in those ways and sharing that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So making it real podcast, highly recommend Kiki's awesome guys. So oh, that's so nice. Uh, you will be happy that you invested your time with her. So, I do so. yeah, absolutely. So listen, Jeff, uh, we could go on and on. Absolutely. I mean, it's always such a treat to be able to spend some time with you and uh, always just kind of never know where that conversation is going to go, which is really fun. I, Leslie, the, the feeling is mutual. And I think um, the industry is better off for having you in it. I love the way um, I see a lot of the different coaches. I, pay a lot of attention and um, I, I love your focus on execution versus tech stack and looking at ways to build relationships and, and kind of grow those relationships. I believe those are the way that that's how you're going to succeed and that's how you're going to have a bigger impact and a better balance in life. So thanks so much for your help and Thank yeah, you. We can do this like once a week. It's great. I love talking sales. And oh, stuff. we gotta <laughs> let's shoot for every quarter. How's that? Sure, that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, let's do it, Jeff. All, All right. right. All right, guys. Thank you so very much for joining us today. It was awesome to have you along. And um, I will look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. All right. Bye for now, everybody. Have a Bye, great day. Thanks for your time. Bye, Jeff. Bye.